Hello, this is Professor BRB, and in the second video in this series, we're going to create two pattern brushes in Adobe Illustrator. One, a fork, using the fork icon that you see below. Cut that down to a half an inch. And one of a spoon. And back down to, I mean, a half a point, rather. Um, and you can see that being able to apply brushes very quickly like this can be a big time saver if you're going to be using a motif repeatedly. Um, before we go further, I want to talk about some of the limitations of the brush, brush tool and some common mistakes. And when I'm learning something new, I almost always make every mistake in the book, uh, and I always learn from that. And when I was designing this spoon icon, I made a classic mistake by, and I saved it so that I could show you, and you can see right here what my mistake was, that I have this break in the handle, it's not continuous. And my mistake was that from the beginning to the end of my central part of the brush, uh, it wasn't the same thickness. So I, I learned from that and I redid my drawing uh, so that I would have that consistent thickness. Another important requirement for a pattern brush is that your different elements need to line up across a central line. And for example, if I were to add this drop of soup and group those, when Illustrator looked at these, and I'm just going to use my align panel to show you what would happen, the vertical align center here, I've got it set at align to selection, what would happen is that this would be pushed up and the, the, the three parts wouldn't center. So I'm just going to undo that and undo that and undo that and get rid of this, so we're not going to use that. So the first thing that we need to do to create these brushes is divide our pieces of cutlery up into three sections, a beginning, a middle, and an end. So let's go ahead and do that. Go down here, I'm going to move my two pieces of cutlery a little bit closer to each other to make it a little bit easier. So if I look at these in outline view, you can see they're just very simple vector shapes. There's no complication of it at all, and that makes my job pretty easy. I'm going to choose my rectangle tool. I'm going to choose a color here so you can kind of see what's going on. And I'm going to make trim shapes. One there. And I can just kind of estimate this, really, where I want my end to be. There's my end. And holding down my Shift and Option key, or my Shift and Alt key, there's my beginning, and there's my middle. And uh, as I said before, it's very important that my middle section be equal on both ends. So I'm going to select all of that, go to my Pathfinder, and Trim. Object, Ungroup, and now I can see I've divided it, my uh, fork and my spoon into three sections. The only other thing that I really need to do here is I want this to be a perfect square. And that's because I'm planning to also create a corner piece. And it's going to give me a good base for doing that. So to make that a perfect square, I go to Window Transform. And in my Transform panel, I can see how wide and how high it is. It's 12.97 points high. So I've got 12.97 here. I select this and I type in 12.97 and I hit return. Now that's a perfect square. 
and I'm just going to delete this one because I'm this is the same. I'm going to use this for both of my brushes. So that's got to set up pretty well. Now we're we've got all our elements now. I'm going to open up the brush panel. And you always want to start with the central section, the middle one. Oops, just select that there. And in your brushes panel, choose new brush. And we want a pattern brush. Okay. So I'm going to call this fork. I'm going to leave scale fixed, spacing zero. And I'm going to leave all this, stretch to fit, and colorization method, I'm going to choose tint because then I can apply any color I want to this. Now these little boxes show me uh, all of the different tiles I need to create this continuous brush. This is the outer corner tile, which Illustrator has created for me. I'm going to create my own tile and replace it. This is my side tile or my center tile, inner corner, start, and finish. I'm going to click OK here and uh, we'll go ahead here and select this and create that as my start tile. So I'm just going to drag this in here and hold down my option key and put it right there. You can see now that's appearing just as it should. Now I'm going to take my finish or my fork and I'm going to once again hold down my option key and drag it into that last tile. And now you see that. Now, don't worry about the fact that this looks small. It's going to be just fine. And I don't have an inner corner tile here. I'm going to fix that in just a moment. So click OK. Make a copy of this by holding down my Shift and Option key. And I want to make a rounded corner. To add a radius in Creative Cloud to one corner is very easy. If you have a pre-Creative Cloud version of Illustrator, this will take you a little bit more work. But if you have Creative Cloud, you just take the Direct Selection tool, click off, make sure that you have only one anchor point selected, and this little dot will appear, and you just grab that and drag it in until you're happy with it. And that uh, is a very easy way to do it. It's one of the nicer features in the new version of Illustrator. And uh, if you don't have that, it is a little bit more work, but it can still be done. So now uh, I've created my radius corner here, and I'm simply going to drag this, holding my Option key, onto that first tile. And that replaces it. And you see now I have this corner, this rounded corner there. I'm going to drag it, holding my Option key again, into that second tile. And notice now I have that nice little rounded corner there. So that's great. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, test this, get rid of my mistake back here. And just click that. And it looks pretty good. You can see there's no breaks. It looks continuous. And it has that nice little rounded corner on it. So all that remains now is for us to repeat those steps and create our spoon. Um, these are both the same in terms of the weight. So I just, oops, just select that first one, new brush, pattern brush, OK, spoon. And there it is. Um, so now I know exactly what I'm doing. I take my end, holding down my Option key, put it there. Take my beginning, Option key, there. And I'm just going to use the same corner, Option key, there. And Option key there to get those nice little rounded corners. So uh, now uh, this should be functioning just fine. And voila. Uh, some of the other things that you could conceivably do with this. Let me create a new layer here. So turn that off. Uh, you can use a dashed line. For example, if I create a large ellipse like this, 
and apply my brush, say my fork brush. It doesn't really look like anything because I don't have a start or a finish. But if I go into my stroke panel and I click dashed line, you can see suddenly my little forks are showing up. And if I make them thin, they, they look kind of good actually. Now, um, the brush tool has its limitations and it does kind of squeeze and distort things to fit. And a lot of times that looks good, sometimes it doesn't. For example, if I went to a thicker line here, you can see that it gets just really very strangely distorted and that's not good at all. Uh, let's see what happens when we use a, um, say, a rounded rectangle. Let's see what that does for us. So this time we'll try the spoon. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Let's go in our stroke panel here and note we have this little align dashes to corners and path ends. And if I click that, it kind of centers it on there. Um, it's a little funny the way the the uh, spoon is curving around, but I think if I reduce the weight, that'll look kind of a little bit better. So now I'd like to apply some color to these strokes, and I think I forgot to apply tint. So let's go back and check. I did forget there. Colorization method says none. I'm not going to be able to apply color unless I change it to tint. Okay. Apply the strokes. And now I should be able to apply any color that is in my swatches panel. Uh, to this and uh, notice that it doesn't accept gradients. It just defaults back to the original um, and you can't put a pattern inside a pattern. So uh, there are some limitations, but uh, pattern brushes are a lot of fun and I hope you explore on your own and create some great looking brushes. So thank you for watching and we'll have more videos on brushes in the future.